Hello everyone, in today's lecture I will show you how to compute the Zaman depression according to Thai code. In fact, I'm using Thai code because this building is being used for a research conducted in Shulong Korn University in Thailand. Regarding the Zaman depression computed according to ASCE, I will record another video that show you how to do it. Going to this Microsoft Word, the Zaman depression is just related to the, to the building height as shown in this table. In order to assign this value inside ETAP, we should first define a load pattern. I define two load patterns, the first called wind X and the second called wind Y. And I choose the type as wind. And regarding the autolateral load, here we can choose the code we want. However, the type code is not yet inserted into ETAPs, then I choose the none, which is the first option. Now, in order to assign these values, we need to compute them in inside Excel which is this one I have prepared previously. The first table show the design with the pressure, which is the, just the same table I show you here. For example, this cell shows the number of story range between the story number one and five, the height of these five stories, and the length of building in X and in Y direction. Here, that the first column shows the story number, story height, elevation, and going to this column, which is WDP, which means wind design and pressure, as shown here, all the stories range between an elevation of 80 meter and 102 meter. We have assigned for them a 2 kilonewton per meter square design wind pressure, which is this one. For all the stories between 40 and 80, we should choose 1.6. And in same manner, I have selected these values. Then the design with the pressure is just related to the elevation of the building. As shown in this column, I name it CC, which means checking if story height can be multiplied by wind design pressure. For example, the design with the pressure here, computed as a force, which, which have a unit of kilonewton, is just equal to the design with the pressure multiplied by story height multiplied by length in y direction. Of course, I'm using y direction because if I'm applying the force here in the x direction, then we should multiply by the length in the y direction. And in the same manner, if we are applying the force in the y direction, we should use the length in the x direction. Therefore, the force Fx is just equal to the sum of the pressure multiplied by story height multiplied by the length. Therefore, we are just multiplying the area load, which is the wind pressure, by the area itself to obtain it as a force. This is very simple. However, some stories need to be modified because this. Okay, let me show you this figure. It can clarify what, what I want to say. For example, the design of the pressure is varying along with the height of the building. And as shown here at story number three, which have an elevation of nine meter, it shares uh, different uh, profiles or the profile of when the pressure is not constant. Then we cannot say, for example, 0 0.5 multiplied by story height, which is three. However, the design of the pressure here is a combination of 0 0.8 and 0 0.5 then some of the stories need to be modified okay okay for example let me show you story story number three because i have drawn this figure maybe we, we can make it more clear the design with the pressure as story number three is just equal to 0 0.5 which is the distance here multiplied by 0 0.8 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.8 multiplied by the length of building in y direction plus 2.5 which is this distance multiplied by this value here i think it's just very clear and easy concept okay and the last two columns here uh, i have calculated the load per unit meter which is just equal to the sum of the pressure multiplied by story height and inside ETAPs, I actually use these values, Fx and Fy. I have distributed a uniform load per meter run. And in order to do this, we need to define a dummy beam. And I have already shown you how to define a dummy beam in lecture, maybe six. 
this one how to assign diaphragm for floors in etaps i have did the dubbing beam in this lecture you can have a look however i will remind you how to do it i just define a beam section from frame section and dummy let's click modify and as shown here i provide very small section dimensions and i have used a compressive strength of a zero strength and for the modifiers i put them all equal to zero and going to the compressive strengths that have a zero strength in same way i have pacify a zero for all inputs and in this here in the same way and then we we will draw these beams as shown let me show you how where i draw it i draw these beams here these are the dummy beam we can draw them from this option draw beam and we select dummy and just we draw okay and if we click display frame load assign we can check the value we have assigned already for the wind in x for example For example, story number one have 1.5 kN per meter. The story above have the same value. Story two, story three have 1.65. And in this manner, I have assigned these values. Maybe let me, for example, put the last story because the floor plan is not the same as the one below. For example, we need to assign 6 kN for this frame. And in same manner, I have used these beams for assigning the wind pressure in the y direction lastly what we can do is to check if we have did everything correctly by running the model i will run it let me click the undeformed shape okay we can check it by computing story shear first i compute the story shear in using hand calculation as shown here first i copy these values here f of x i copy them to here and i compute the story shear and of course story shear is just the summation of of forces above this story and the error means is just the difference between the story shear that we will obtain from etaps and from the hand calculation okay the analysis have finished now i will click the undeformed shape And from display, story response plot, I will choose the wind X and story shears. And from formatted, we can obtain the results and I will export them to Excel. And we just copy. And that's shown here. There is no difference. The error is just zero. And we do that just the same for wind in the y direction. Okay, and as shown here, also the difference in storage here due to wind in the y direction is also zero. Therefore, we have assigned all the wind load in a correct way inside ETAPS. And this is the end of this video, and please continue the next one.